Okay, first question. Is your name Edward Meyer? Mm -hmm. Yes. Could you speak a little louder, please? Yes. Are you wearing a shirt? Yes. Do you live in Switzerland? Yes. Have you taken photographs of Palladian spacecraft? Yes. Do you ride your moped? Yes. Do you receive your mail at Schmidrudy? Yes. Did you fake the photographs taken at Ober Satellite with a model suspended? No. Wait till the answer. Or wait till the question is finished. Suspended by a string? No. Let's do that one more time, okay? Wait till I finish. Do you live in Switzerland? Yes. The tape is taken back to be analyzed by Bob Phelan, a former criminal investigator with the Sheriff's Department of Colorado and a specialist in lie detection. It was also a yes answer. Number three, do you live in Switzerland? Uh, yes, he lives in Switzerland. Uh, there's enough stress here to indicate that uh, probably isn't where he prefers to live or he's lived someplace else. Question four was the first relevant question you asked him, is have you taken the photographs of spaceships, spacecraft? His answer was yes. He's being extremely forceful, though not deceptive. Mm -hmm. And my opinion on that particular question is that he's being as truthful as possible. Mm -hmm. Number seven was the second relevant question you asked him, and he answered right on top of the question, and the person asking the question had asked him to answer the question again, and then he asked the question again. The stress levels between the two diminished the second time that the question was asked, which is uh, not indicative of deception, because stress builds in a deceptive pattern. Does, it doesn't diminish. Mm -hmm. If it was a deceptive answer, the stress would then increase, not decrease. Mm -hmm. Now, something was extremely interesting to me was the uh, eighth question you asked him on, uh, do you drink coffee? And for some reason, he's more stressful <coughs> on, the, on the statement about coffee than he is about the picture of the spacecraft. Yeah, that makes sense, because about three days before we tested Meyer, he promised his wife he'd stop drinking coffee, but we noticed it was sneaking a few occasionally. Okay, that could probably be the account for it then. Phelan reviews the tape several times. He could find no evidence of deception in the statements about Meyer's experiences. Much of Meyer's film has been lost or stolen. But the remaining sequences are, as promised, the most astonishing ever released. In one demonstration, the beam ship flies around a tree which can be seen to sway in the backwash. Once again, in slow motion. Even slower. Later, Semyasi brings a new beam ship to pose for Maya's cameras. The variation quite unlike anything he has seen before. She explains, as best he can understand it, the function of the spheres for propulsion of the craft in interstellar travel. The sound of the new beam ship shows marked differences to the sounds of the other variation craft. Maya tapes these as well. If you wanted to give a, uh, a visual display, let's say we're talking a motor. It could be a motor, a shaft of a motor with four magnetic poles or coils around this uh, shaft. The curious thing about this 
it changes from four to five, six, seven, all the way up to a number that uh, is difficult to discern. At a certain point, you're going to generate a certain amount of magnetism. And then later on, you want a stronger field, well, you're going to select um, eight, eight fields. All right, now you're going to hear eight pulses on the tape. And then later on, you want a stronger field, uh, you can select uh, 16, 32. Uh, is there anything unusual about this? I would think it's highly unusual. I don't really see any application for it, uh, with the exception of, like I say, either generating a magnetic wave of some sort for laboratory purposes or uh, maybe in this case, uh, propulsion. Without ever having seen a picture of the new beam ship, Shellman has drawn a representation of the spheres and offered an explanation of their function. The tapes hold still another surprise. Also, another interesting point to note here is we have a steady, it seems to be a steady pattern all throughout all of this random mm -hmm. signal. Uh, it seems to be a level change very steadily in around 5 to 10 cycles per second, which happens to be uh, in the area of the natural magnetic resonance of Earth, uh, also called the Schumann resonance. Is that significant in any way? It could be. Uh, it's just interesting to note the correlation there. The, the peculiar correlation is yeah, something strange. I mean, why, why would yeah. the correlation be there? Yeah. You can see it on the oscilloscope. Mm -hmm. Meyer says the beam ships can ride the magnetic field of the Earth. Rognerud's findings seem to bear this out. Going back to computer models of previous beam ships, simulation of the revolving lights reveals a kind of pulsing that matches the varying frequencies. Analyst Jim Dilatoso is convinced that the sound and light frequencies are related. 